Good morning. Hola, Lee. Today is January 31st. Welcome to First Baptist Church. A few announcements. We are still compiling the pictures for the picture directory. If you have questions about how to do that, please contact Gary. We are looking for annual reports for our 2020 annual book. I know that this year has been unusual, but I ask that people think about how we want to remember this 10, 15, 20 years from now. I will host a chat on Friday the 12th. That'll be Friday the 12th at 10 a.m. And you will be receiving the information about how to participate in that. We will start again our hybrid Sunday school classes beginning on Sunday, February 14th, Valentine's Day. These will be Zoom as well as in-person Bible study. At 10.30. Ann Hoflin will be our teacher. And it will be a series that will help us to focus upon Lent. And she's going to be talking about deadly sins, so you don't want to miss it. We will have a Zoom annual meeting on February 20th at 1 p.m. And you will be given more information about how to participate at that meeting. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
Would you please bow your heads for the invocation? Holy God, we come together in the silence of your constant and reliable presence. We stand in the stillness and find our rest in you. For you, O oh God, are our sanctuary. Unshakable God, you are our rock, our fortress, and our refuge at all times. We trust and find safety in you because in you we find the real home of our heart. We come today to be still in this sacred place, to recognize and acknowledge that you are indeed our hope our peace, our joy, for all the changing times of our lives. Amen. Good morning. Please join us as we sing Forever and Still.
Please join me in prayer. We praise you, O Lord, our rock, our strength, our source of hope. In all times and circumstances, we look to you for our security and our well-being. And particularly in these days of uncertainty and challenge, we would be constantly seeking your will and discovering that your love for us is beyond measure. We come before you today to worship you. Remind us of your gracious presence. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless your holy name. Forgive us when out of pride or our desire to control, we have relied on other temporary and inadequate sources of security. For you alone are worthy of our trust. We would again open ourselves to your saving power. Hear our prayer as we repent, turning again to you, unburdening our weary souls to you. Hear our silent prayers as we let go of things of which you only you can relieve us. Thank you, Lord. Renew us. May we be refreshed by the forgiving power of your Holy Spirit. We pray for our healing as a nation. May our leaders share a vision of a country at peace with itself. Draw our elected leaders together in common purposes, and may the good of all the people be the goal that is constantly before them. You have called us to be sisters and brothers. We are fellow workers together in Christ. Help us to more fully comprehend that calling and to live out our identity in you. Bless the activities and workings of this church. Give wisdom to act with health and safety of all foremost in our decision-making. Continue to bless and unite us by your spirit. Be with the members of this congregation who are ill and those facing threatening physical, emotional, and spiritual challenges. May they know and experience a strength beyond their own. We praise you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Bless the children and young people who are distance learning and beginning to return to classes. Bless our elders who are sometimes confused by all the isolating changes that they and we are experiencing. Bless parents who are balancing work and family, finances, and the emotional well-being of their households. Bless all that we may see one another as fellow beloved children of you, our one Father. Soften our hearts. Lengthen our patience. Renew our resolve to live creatively and aware of your continuing presence. Challenge us to love, that we may, by your undeserved kindness to us, live as disciples of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray this prayer, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer. Nuya 
ยะเลยรอไตกะกิยานิมิเทวะดะลอมิเยตะทอทอลอเยตะฮุตะวะบายะไตกะกิยาดอยะลากะปอเวดะยัวนิลอยะกิยะบะเลยะตะบุเพะ
It's a rhythm, like the ocean, or like breathing. Wake up, rest well. Wake up, rest well. God has worked those rhythms into our life. That is why we have day and night, waking and sleeping. That is why God gives us the Sabbath at the end of a long work week. And then God makes that Sabbath into a command. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. The seventh day is a day of rest to honor the Lord your God. The reason is that in six days the Lord made everything. And on the seventh day, God rested. Even God rested. And God knows that we need that rest too. So that is why God gives us this, this rhythm. And it seems so easy, so natural, because that's the way that God made us, the rhythm that God gave to us. Wake up, rest well, breathe in, breathe out, work hard, rest in God. But we push it. We stay up later. We work longer. We try to do more. We run around and take care of everything. We try to fix everything. We are awake. We are following Jesus. We are working to build the kingdom of God. But suddenly, we realize that we've forgotten to rest let alone rest well. We've forgotten to remember the Sabbath and keep it as a holy day of rest to honor God. Every time I read the first words of our scripture today, I find myself just wanting to take a deep sigh of relief. I find rest in God. Only he gives me hope. And I find myself reminded of a, another song that says, So I rejoice and I'm glad even my body has hope. I love that. Even my body has hope. Sometimes it feels like we think that God is mostly interested in our souls. But God is interested not only in the well-being of our souls, but in the well-beings of our bodies and our, our minds as well. And for us to be well in mind, body, and soul, we need rest. The rest that we can find only in God. Later in our scripture, the psalmist says, trust God all the time. And I think that there is a strong connection between trust and rest. I can remember when I was a teenager and my family took a vacation to Florida. We drove all the way from Indiana to Florida and we had been driving a long time, and my parents had both taken turns driving. And my dad turns to me and says, would you like to drive? And I'll be honest with you, I hesitated. It really made me nervous to think of driving with all of my family in the car. I had just gotten my driver's license and I felt kind of unsure. But I said, sure. And my dad handed me the keys. And about 15 minutes later, I noticed that the car had gotten really quiet. And I realized 
that everybody else in the car was asleep. And at first, I was really mad. They, they had all fallen asleep and left me there by myself with nobody to talk to, nobody to keep me company. But then it hit me. They trusted me. Nobody felt like they had to stay awake and watch my driving. They trusted me. And because they trusted me, they were able to sleep, to rest, to get the rest that they would need to take over driving for the next part of the journey. And the same is true of us and God. When we truly trust in God, then we can find rest. Because God makes us feel safe. When we trust in God, we realize that we don't have to worry about anything. Because God will take care of us. God only wants what is best for us. And what's not to trust? We hear the psalmist describing God and he uses all these words that inspire confidence and trust. He says, God is my rock and my salvation, my mighty rock and my protection. These are strong, bold words that remind us that God is powerful and protective and loving. It seems so obvious that we should put our trust in God. And yet it seems like time and time again, we put our trust in so many other things. Technology, money, other people even ourselves. This week, I had a dream, and it's weird and kind of embarrassing, as I suppose dreams often are, but I dreamed I was at the St. Anthony Park Library, which is about four miles from my house, and I was getting a book for the children for story time. And I specifically remember that this book was called Froggy and Me. And as I was going to check it out, I suddenly realized that I was only wearing a towel. I was so embarrassed and I told myself, oh, apparently you forgot to get dressed before you drove over to the library. So of course I decided I needed to leave the library as soon as possible. But I wanted to check the book out so that this trip hadn't been wasted. But when I got to go check it out, the book was gone. I couldn't find it, so I decided just I was going to go. And then I checked my pockets for my keys, and I remembered that I didn't have any pockets. So I didn't have any keys. So I decided to go out to my car, and maybe my keys would be there. And when I got outside, and thankfully for some reason it was a warm spring day, I couldn't find my car. So there I was, in a towel, with no keys, no car, no phone, no money, and on top of everything else, I suddenly remembered that my husband was out of town. And I suddenly felt so all alone. And then I woke up. And even after I woke up, I felt kind of panicked and unsettled. I knew it was only a dream, but it left me feeling really shaken up. And I got up without even saying my morning prayers like I usually do. 
But although I didn't talk to God, God was talking to me. Because I suddenly remembered that that book that I was checking out at the beginning of the dream was called Froggy and Me. And I remembered that in junior church, sometimes I use the word frog as an acronym to teach the children about God. Frog. F-R-O-G. Fully rely on God. And I thought about how in my dream, all those things that I usually rely on, my outward appearance and respectability, my phone, my car, my husband, money, all of those things were gone. And I needed to remember to fully rely on God. Sometimes we rely on these other things so much, but they can let us down. The psalmist reminds us, even if you gain more riches, don't put your trust in them. And he reminds us that people are only a breath, that on the scale they weigh nothing. And we often put all of our trust in people, in leaders, in friends, in family. And no matter how much these people care about us and love us, they can let us down. Or we rely on ourselves. We try to do it all, to, to take care of it all, to take care of ourselves and the world and build the kingdom of God all by ourselves. And that's when we get so tired. We put our trust in ourselves and other people. And we are all as light as air compared to God, who is our rock, our fortress, our refuge. And I know I do this. Even this week, as I was working on this sermon about trusting in God, I found myself getting worried about getting everything done on time and saying the right things, and I felt overwhelmed like I couldn't do it. And suddenly this light bulb went off over my head, like, duh, of course I can't do it. Not alone. And then I turned to God in prayer. And it was like a weight was lifted off my shoulders. I love that part in the middle of our scripture today where it says, people, trust in God all the time. Tell him all your problems because God is our protection. Prayer is the place where trust begins the place where rest is found. It is the place where we can take all of our burdens, all of those things that we have been trying to carry around on our own, and we give them to God. And God says to us, trust me, I can handle it, let go of all of this and rest in me. And when we finally do this, when we let go and put our trust in God, we find that we remember that God is strong. God is 
loving. God is faithful and will provide for us. God is our refuge, our place of safety in times of trouble. And these are times of trouble. We are all tired and weary and in need of rest. And God is gently calling to us. Come to me. Trust in me. Find your rest in me. Mind, body, and soul. Rest well. Amen. We will sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. It's number 37 in our hymnals, all three verses.
Go in peace. Trust in God and find your rest in him. Amen.